Welcome to Introduction to Procedural Asset Creation, Lesson 4. So what we're going to do is actually start to complete this asset and get a few more things set up so that it's real-time ready and it will work um, in a real-time environment. And in this course's case, it'll work inside of Unity with collision meshes and material assignments and uh, slider values to tweak the size and the angle of the ramp, um, stuff like that. So let's start by getting our collision mesh all set up. All right. So you'll notice that we actually have the final mesh here. This was before we clipped it. Now we don't want to create the collision mesh out of the clipped geometry because that's just a lot of extra geometry that the, um, the collision mesh doesn't really need. All right. And so that is really just our render mesh in terms of unity. All righty. So what we can do is we can actually copy off uh, the geometry from here. So we want to take the geometry from the merge to node and feed that into a group node. So I'm going to hit tab and type out group and feed the value or the geometry from the merge to node into this new group node. So now I have this new group node and if you are inside of Unity and you've installed the Houdini engine already, alrighty, and if you do not know how to install the Houdini engine for Unity, um, I would go and check out the Game Tutor installing Houdini engine for Unity course as it will get you up to speed and get you all the uh, scripts and files necessary to have the engine inside of the Unity editor. Okay, so if you've installed the Houdini engine already, you can just go up to the Houdini engine um, menu drop down. And what we want to do is go up to the settings window up here. And now if you go into the general tab, you'll notice that there is this collision group and it's got a name next to it. This called collision geo. Now this is the name that this group node that we just created over here in Houdini needs to be called. All right. So I usually just copy this off and this tells unity that we are considering this piece of geometry, the collision mesh. That way I can process it appropriately. All right, so I'm going to actually give that group that name, Collision Geo, and then also the node. I'm gonna give it that name just so I don't lose my place. All righty, then I can actually feed that into the final merge node like that. All right, so now we have a collision mesh set up and you'll notice that if you middle mouse click on this merge node, we have one primitive group and it's called Collision Geo. So with that set up, Unity will now be able to read that mesh in as a collision mesh. And all these other meshes over here are just going to be the render mesh. So let me actually just clean this up a little bit. I'm going to drop down a merge node to do that. <clears throat> that way I don't have a lot of lines uh, messing up my graph view in here. That way I just have two connections. And it just, for me, it just makes it feel cleaner. Then I know that my collision mesh is going in and my render mesh is going in. And this actually brings up another good point. Since we've already saved this off as an OTL, all right, what I want to do is I want to uh, start to organize my graph a little bit better. All righty, so what I can do is I can select a whole bunch of nodes and hit Control N on the keyboard. And that creates what is called a netbox. And the netbox allows you to basically bundle up whole systems of graphs, or of nodes, excuse me, into these net boxes and you can actually collapse them. That way you can move them around and everything is nice and organized. And especially if you start getting really, really large graphs, um, this comes in handy and you can name it. So this is going to be the clipping system. All right, we can bundle this up here and call this the skin. All right, and then we can bundle this up and we can just call this the blueprint. All right, so that's great. Now we've got a really organized graph. And the last thing I like to do is give them a little bit of color. All right, so I'm just going to give this a yellow and give this a green. This one's going to be a green. And then I always put a red box around my collision mesh. So I'm going to call this netbox collision. That way you can find it really, really quick. And coming up with those kinds of conventions while you're working um, in these graphs um, is a really good idea. Just helps you to identify major systems really quickly and make edits very efficiently. Okay. All right. So that's pretty much um, all we need to do at this point. Uh, we've got our collision mess set up. The last thing I want to do is I, I want to um, 
drop down a new facet node. And what I want to do is I actually want to cusp the polygons. Now what this does is it, it, it's basically setting a normal angle. So if you're familiar with um, either smoothing your normals in Maya or setting uh, your normals to either hard or soft inside of Max, um, that is what that, 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 this is what that node does basically. Okay? So I'm going to set it to a normal angle of something like 65. And then in order for these normals to actually come through into Unity, we just want to post compo compute those normals. All right. And then I'm going to put a net box around this guy. And I always like to make my final output blue. I'll just call this final output. All righty. And that is pretty much the graph. We are now ready to actually import this into Unity. All right. But before we do that, what I want to do is I want to start to cover how we can make this a little bit more interactive. Okay. Because when we bring this into Unity, this is what we're going to see. We're going to see this single node or this geometry, and we're going to see an empty UI. So what we can actually do is we can actually give this node a whole bunch of properties that allows a designer or artist to use sliders or checkboxes or string text fields, um, checkboxes, and rather than having to come into the graph and edit the values of the nodes themselves. All right, so in the next video, we will cover that. Thanks so much.